we lost you for a second. All right. Do you, oh, do you need to get here? We'll be ready in just a minute. It's fine. I bet it's I will call this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works to order. This is Tuesday, March 3rd of 2020. First up, we have messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board this evening? No. Uh, next is petitions and remonstrances. If we have anyone who is here to speak on a topic that is not on the agenda this evening, now is the opportunity to do so. Do we have any public comment on something not on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none. Next is the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda is the approval of minutes for February 18th, 2020. Approve renewal with air marking company to 2019 pavement marking contract. Approve renewal with uh, Cargill de-icing de technology for 2018 agreement for enhanced road salt. Approve renewal for Irving materials to 2018 agreement for concrete materials. Approve outdoor lighting service agreement with Duke Energy. Resolution 2020-09, approve use of public right-of-way for 2020 Pride Fest on Saturday, August 29th, and then approval of the payroll register. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? Seeing none. Do we have any public comment on any of the items within the consent agenda? Seeing none. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? I move that we approve the consent agenda for March 3rd. 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next up under new business, we have resolution 2020-15, approved mobile vendor in the public right of way, and this is for Big D's barbecue. Uh, Adam Wilson, uh, public works director. Um, Big D's barbecue has petitioned the city of Bloomington to be able to Oh, I should probably turn on my microphone. Uh, Big D's Barbecue has petitioned the Economic Sustainable Development Department and the City of Bloomington to be able to operate a uh, mobile food uh, serving, I don't know if it, it's not a truck, um, yeah, trailer and such, um, from the public rights of way. Uh, we've received all the necessary materials and certifications from the vendor and are recommending approval of this vendor as a, uh, through resolution 2020-15. Thank you. Questions on this item from the board? No. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move that we approve resolution 2020-15, approve mobile vendor in the public right of way, and that's Big D's barbecue. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is approved partnership agreement with Buskirk Chumley Theater Management. Good evening. I'm Paula McDevitt, director of the city of Bloomington Parks and Recreation Department, and I'm here uh, this evening to request the uh, board approve amendment number two to the 2019 partnership agreement that the uh, city has with Buzzkirk Chumley Theater Management. I was here last month asking for approval of amendment number one. Uh, they, Buzzkirk Chumley Theater Management uh, has a new director, but at the time have been going through interview process. Um, it's been a little challenging to get calendars together, so uh, this second amendment will allow us to keep the 2019 partnership agreement in place until April 1st. Uh, the new director has been hired. Uh, we are in the final stages of negotiation um, and finalizing the partnership agreement, so we fully expect to come back to you next month with the 2020 partnership agreement. This amendment just keeps the 2019 one in place. Excellent. Questions on this amendment? Any public comment on this amendment? Seeing none, is there a motion? I'll move approval of the partnership agreement with Buskirk Chumley Theater Management Amendment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Next is approved temporary closure of Lower Cascades Road, and this was from Friday, March 13th through Wednesday, September 30th. Good evening, Sean Starwitz, ESD. 
The city of Bloomington is requesting to expand uh, its system of walking and bicycle trails with a trial conversion of a 0.6 mile section of Old State Road 37 north uh, to a pedestrian and bike bicycle only trail. The conversion will extend from a point just north of the 4546 overpass, the Clubhouse Drive from March 13th through September 30th, 2020. One of the seven public amenity improvements being funded by the city's bicentennial bond issued in 2018. The pilot trail project is intended to expand and integrate within Bloomington's network of walking and bicycle trails, provide a safe and accessible destination for rec recreation and exercise, and offers, offer bicycle uh, commuters additional options for safer routes. All of these goals were identified as priorities through both the Parks and Recreation develop, uh, Department's master plan from 2016 to 2020 and the City of Bloomington's most recent comprehensive plan, which was adopted in 2018. The waterfall shelter located in the road closure area will still be accessible by bicycle or by foot. The drive through creek crossing just, no, just south of the waterfall shelter will also be inaccessible to motor, motorized vehicles. Barricades at the north and south ends of the road section will alert motorists of the clo road closure. The city will gauge uh, the park usage during the pilot using multiple data points, including shelter reservations, water use, and trash levels. Survey feedback and data about the park use will inform the decision of the road's long-term conversion. The city is also planning events to take place on the converted road this spring and mm -hmm. summer. Uh, staff recommends approval. Um, this is an interdepartmental, inner city collaboration as well. And I know we have Parks Paula McDevitt to answer any questions as the petitioner for you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Paula McDevitt, Director of the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, thank you, Sean. As Sean mentioned, this is an interdepartmental effort. Uh, we are working with uh, not only the Parks Department, but Economic and Sustainability Development Department, Planning, the Bike and Ped, and Office of the Mayor. Uh, Parks Department kicked this off um, with our general obligation bond in 2016, where we identified capital improvement projects down in Lower Cascades Park related to the creek improvement project and an accessible trail to back to the waterfall shelter. In 2018, through bicentennial bonds, we identified another $2.1 million for improvements down in the park. And that launched our deeper dive, deeper look into what we could do to improve um, people's experiences down in the park and connect the Cascade Trails that we already have in place to Miller Showers Park. Um, as the report identifies, um, we also surveyed in March of 2019, um, conducted a survey uh, to get some feedback from how people use the park, how many people drive to the park, what their most popular um, activity is in the park, and um, in that survey we did not ask um, what people's opinions were for a full closure. We asked if we closed it one way or the other way, um, and we just wanted to try this out because we didn't get that information in the survey. What this pilot project will allow us to do is to create an experience that people have never had before, being able to walk and bike this section, 0.6 of a mile, through the winding, very picturesque, part of the park. Um, it will also uh, give access to the waterfall side, shelter side of the park. There is a, a bridge that you can cross over, but you would be crossing um, a road that is closed to cars. Um, and some of the conversations I've had, that is, um, we don't have, I should point out, we don't have another park with a road through it. This was our first park, and at the time, way back when, this was the only way to get into Bloomington. Well, now we have other avenues, other roads that bring people into town. Um, so it's it's really taking a trial period to encourage people to use the park in a different way. Um, we will, again, be collecting da data, collecting feedback. We've already taken several calls. We have a survey monkey set up when we take a call to get people's responses. Um, but when and if this is approved and this goes into place, we really, really want to encourage people to come out and use this space in this new way and then give us their feedback. We, we definitely recognize and have survey information that people use this as 
um, a cut through, a way to get from point A to point B a little bit um, quicker. I do want to point out, because I've taken several calls, I do want to clarify that uh, Clubhouse Drive will be open. So to access the park from the north, you would take um, old, you will take North Walnut up to the light at Old State, uh, Road 37 and turn left down into the park. The intersection of Clubhouse Drive and Old State Road 37 will remain open, so people will be able to go down and park at both parking lots on either side of the destination playground that we have down there. And you'll be able to turn right and go up Clubhouse Drive and get out up to the golf course and out to Kinzer Pike. Um, and again, with that, we just really want to encourage people to try this space. Uh, a pilot is just that is to try it on, see how it works, take that information to make the best decision moving forward to what is a substantial investment um, in this very first park in our park system. Be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Questions from the board. How do you plan to conduct the survey during this pilot program? Do you have online access to a survey? And how will people get to that? Yes, um, we have various uh, opportunities set up. There will be a lot of signage, obviously, with the barricades on both the north and the south end. And on the signs on both sides, there will be QR codes that when people either enter that space or leave that space, they can use the QR code that will take them to a survey. Um, the survey will also be on our website, w www.bloomington.in.park slash Lower Cascades um, and encourage people or they can call us and we'll take that information over the phone as well. Did you say there was a parking area both from the north side and then also from the south side? I Thank you for pointing that. There will be parking on the south side as well. I um, I obviously identified the existing parking lots that we have that everyone I think is most familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, on the south side, uh, we felt it was important to encourage people to access the park. They may even walk down Miller Showers Park and cross over and then wander down. So we wanted to um, give parking there. We identified parallel parking spaces under the overpass and along either side of the road. About 20 spaces will be available. And again, um, signage will be in place to, to show people the way. How will they access the park from Miller Showers? How does that? They would cross over um, uh, college and then head down, uh, that's, that's old 37 yes. heading north. Okay. Um, that would still be open to traffic, um, but under the, over, under the overpass okay. will be the parallel parking that they right. could park and then walk north. Okay. Um, we talked a little yesterday about um, sort of the, um, the uh, MOT side of this and um, you know, the way that traffic will divert during this temporary period and also um, you know, if it were to become permanent, what that would mean for the road impacts. Is this is not really a question for you, Paula. So is planning and transportation planning to do a, um, a count or a study or anything to understand what the change is in that, if somebody could Hi, Beth Rosenbarger, Planning and Transportation Department, um, the Planning Services Manager there. So we are working actually, Dave to Kidd, the Director of Innovation at the city, and um, Mallory Rickbile, our Bicycle and Pedestrian Coordinator, have teamed up to lead the evaluation of the space. So one challenge in terms of counts is that we don't actually have a current count of people walking, running, or biking there to compare it to. Um, but they are tracking some metrics in order to evaluate it. And if we can do a counter or consider different ways of stationing people in a, like a manual count, uh, we could do some of those throughout the project as well. Is there a plan to do a pre-count of vehicle traffic? Oh, yes. There has been. Um, and maybe it was in the packet. No. I don't know. So, um, oh. From 2018, I need to look at it, but it was about over 800 vehicles on the days it was measured in um, 2018. It was like two different days in May, um, just about 50% going each direction. And um, the speeds from those counts were above the speed limit. If I remember the 85th percentile was like, it was above 30 in both cases. Okay. And that 
that would be a good thing. I mean, for for future consideration, um, you know, if this would move to a proposal for a change of that roadway, that would be a good um, report to have, as well as um, obviously there's not going to be, I mean, we don't really need a count of vehicle traffic in that area because we can make an assumption mm -hmm. um, about what that would be during the trial. Um, but it would be good to, uh, you know, if there is any count on other activity that's mm -hmm. acquired, that would be really um, helpful. Sure. Do you want any more info on the vehicular counts or? Um, I don't, I don't need any more information on it now. It'll just be, it'll be good to have, um, yeah, for the right. for the future. future. Um, another question that came up that's uh, well, I have to hear uh -huh. <laughs> that's planning and transportation related. I think is um, question about um, current uh, bus transit service. Um, I'm assuming right now we have no transit service that's coming through that section of the park. Correct. I don't know how close the transit comes to any point near that area, but that, that's one um, you know, question I had was sort of what the plans are for uh, transit, if there might be any change in plans. Um, and then also thinking about the other um, roadways in this area, you know, I actually um, this afternoon saw an inquiry from a resident uh, wondering about improvements to North Walnut Street because there currently aren't any um, side paths or sidewalks. Uh, basically, it's like the business um, North Walnut as you head um, away from the um, stadium north. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much in the way of um, infrastructure there for um, pedestrians in particular. Cyclists use a um, sort of Street. Shero, if you will, I think. Um, so wondering if there are opportunities for improvements in that area as well, especially as vehicular traffic may change. That was an inquiry that I, I saw. Sure. So in terms of the bus routes, there is no current route that goes through Cascades um, Park on Bloomington Transit. I think potentially if this, um, if this were successful and we are like this, we want to help make this a more accessible destination. Mm -hmm. That's just something that would have to be evaluated later with Bloomington Transit. Um, so it would, you know, Bloomington Transit is a separate entity, but we uh, work together a lot and uh, it would just be something to be evaluated, I think, at that point. In terms of North Walnut, there are not, um, continuous sidewalks on North Walnut in that area. There are some sections that do have sidewalk and there are striped bike lanes along there all the way to um, the intersection with old 37. But I still agree the situation and infrastructure could be improved. And um, I think it's something we would just have to continue to look at and would depend on funding. But also you could say if if this were successful, we would want to look at ways and help people access this space as well, and that could be improvements in the area. Great. Beth, what about school buses going through the park? There are no school buses that go through, no bus routes. Yeah, um, good question. I would be interested in just like a little more detail if you have it up on your computer about vehicular traffic and. Yeah. Okay. Mm -mm. So. This date, um, one time in May 2018, the, 80, the, uh, the average daily traffic was 942 vehicles, so I was wrong on that one. And the mean speed was 29 miles per hour, but the 85th percentile was 34. That means 85% of vehicles are going 34 miles per hour or below, and 15% are going above that. And then, on the southern, that count happened somewhere between West Clubhouse Drive and IMI, so within the closure area. And then farther south from there, between the driveway and Gorley Pike, there was a count done and um, the traffic count was 1,003 vehicles. The mean speed there was 31 miles per hour. What's the posted speed limit? 20. 
and the 85th percentile was 36. So I apologize for the 800 number. We had this um, other connect, other thing that was displaying it incorrectly, so it was sure. in my mind. I wasn't trying to do that on purpose. That's okay. okay. I appreciate you yeah. going through that. Um, this is kind of a general question, and maybe it relates to that, but I, I think you mentioned you had surveyed and asked the question if we closed one side versus the other was the speed of traffic taken into account there? Or what made the decision, no, let's go with the whole road instead of just one lane? Um, great question. And the survey, I should also note, is available on our website in the lower cascades if people want to take a deeper um, look at it. And um, it was really split 50-50, the number of cars that go north, south, or south, north. Um, and so that's sort of what led us to, well, what about this option of a full closure was mm -hmm. um, split. I should also um, note we had 212 respondents to the survey, and um, 149 um, indicated that they drive to the park. Um, 126 respondents indicated that they either bike or walk or run for recreation or to commute to work through that area, and 145 people commute to work through that that road. So again, the survey, it, it was really split to the point where we were just like, well, do you go north? Do you go south? Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of thought, if you did close it on one side, then the barricades and, and getting people in and out of um, the parking lots and that. So this is really what led us, well, what about this option? And, and let's try it and see it. And, and uh, some of the feedback that I, I've had is that, gosh, it just 100% takes the cars out of the equation. And I have all this space to walk and, and to wander and not worry about a car coming by and only a barricade between me and that car. Mm -hmm. So it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on the commuting number, did, did the survey um, delineate those who are commuting by vehicle versus those who are commuting by um, bike or walk? Um, well, 126 said they commute on a bike for work okay. through there versus the 145 um, driving okay. through. Other questions from the board before we open it for public comment? All right, um, how many oh, are I have one oh, more question, go ahead. sorry. Uh, just the dates, like the timing and, and the what made us choose, or sorry, what made you choose that length of time versus a shorter period, let's say? Sure. Um, well, we picked March. Um, we wanted to wait till spring sprung. To have done this any earlier during the winter months wouldn't have been a really good indication. We know our, our seasons, um, really, people start really using the parks in the spring and summer. So that is really what pushed us into March. We thought sort of a soft closing um, mm -hmm. over spring break while we can get everything in place and um, then people come back and it's in place. Um, and then we wanted to give it the good six months so that we can really evaluate um, the shelter rentals, how they're affected, um, park usage. Um, that's a, this is a time of, of year where the park is really heavily used. And to have skewed it one way or the other, you know, winter, spring wouldn't have been a real good indicator. So we feel like we're really hitting our peak season uh, to get that evaluation. Any other questions before we turn to public comment? We'll have another opportunity yeah. to ask questions. All right. How many are here to make public comment on this particular item? Just so I can get a gauge. OK. Um, we'll take about three minutes per person uh, for public comment. And uh, if you want, first person, you can go ahead and uh, take the podium. If you'll please uh, state your name for our record, we would appreciate that. Hi, um, Greg Alexander. Uh, first, I want to draw your attention to a double standard. There was a petition two weeks ago to close a pedestrian facility for an entire year, and that facility had been closed seven weeks already before it came to you guys, and the facility had actually been destroyed by bulldozers before it came to you guys, whereas to close a car facility, we ask permission before we close it. I just think you should be aware of the double standard. Um, 
I, I think this is a great idea. Um, we have a real need for it. Uh, in my life, I've been a recreational cyclist using that facility, and I go down there. I'm not bragging. I go 20, 25 miles an hour on the downhill, and there's always cars coming up on me, and it should be speed limit 20. That shouldn't happen. Um, now I'm a parent. I, I like to take my kids down there in my bike trailer. Um, I'm still getting tailgated, getting unsafe passes. It's ridiculous. It's terrifying. And then beyond that, my, <clears throat> my kids are at the playground, and there are these cars zooming by while they're playing. And I don't want to supervise my kids, but I really have to watch them like a hawk because they like playing right by the street. They like playing in the drainage ditch. Um, and then in a couple years, my kids are going to go to North High School. And this is a potential route for them to use to transport their own self to North, which is something I really want them to be able to have that kind of independence. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's lacking some connections. Um, and I want you to be aware of this because uh, we'll get results. You know, people will use this facility, but that's only the beginning. If it remains for 10 years, as these connections are filled in, um, a lot more people will use this facility. It doesn't, for example, there's no, low, no, no connection yet from Clubhouse Drive to North High School. That's, there's like some indication it's planned, but it hasn't happened yet. The connection to the south, to the Miller Showers Park, there's not continuous sidewalks for that connection yet. Um, there's no connection whatsoever to Arlington Heights Elementary or to the Kroger that's there, the used to be a marsh. Um, and then one other thing to keep on mind is that there's no alternative to this route for bicycle and pedestrians. Like Kinzer Pike has a lot of challenges for bicycle and pedestrian. I wound up using it last year with my kids in the bike trailer because O37 was closed last year. Um, and so it's great that we have this, but once we have it, we, we have to keep it open. You know, I don't want to bike with my kids in the trailer again on Kinzer Pike. I don't want to bike with my kids in the trailer on Walnut. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right, next comment, please. If you'll state your name for our record. Hello, I'm Mark Stotsberg. I serve on the Bike Pedestrian Safety Commission. I'm also a, a parent with children, and we've biked out to Cascades Park a number of times, but it has been stressful on that windy road, especially uh, on the uphill. Also a future parent of high school kids, and I'm already starting to look at routes to the high school, and this would be a, a, a very helpful route. I actually live all the way over in Park Ridge, but we have good bike facilities. We have the Polly Grimshaw Trail, which gets us to the bypass. The bypass has a great side path, which goes all the way down there. Uh, and so this is really filling out a, a network for, for Bloomington. It will be accessible to more people than those that live next to it. Uh, on the Bike Pedestrian Safety Commission, we also see a trend in, uh, increase and electric bikes being used, which is another way in which uh, people can end up biking to this location, even though it's on the edge of town rather than in the middle of town. So I think this will be a, a great asset that will make for a safe and enjoyable experience for people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm I th uh, Janet Nichols, and I think I'm going to be in the minority here because I'm opposed to it being closed either, either temporarily or otherwise. And for that, the reasons that I have for that, one, I was here in 65 and have enjoyed that park ever since. And it is personal to me. I brought my picture as evidence that I used it then and that my family uses it now. The point is that that is the alternate route. For those of us who live in the northeast part of the county, if the, as you all call it, Walnut is closed, as it sometimes, not closed, but if it is backed up with traffic or closed for an accident, then the two alternate routes that we have for security vehicles or emergency vehicles is Dunn Street, which is terribly dangerous, and really not, does not serve a good purpose for that. The other option is then for those vehicles to go around on Kinzer Pike and come down through Cl Clubhouse Drive and then continue on Old 37. So in my opinion, that does not give us equal service to others in the county 
for our security, our safety, and our um, emergency needs. Now, I know that there's been some mention of speed, and that's probably true. 20 miles an hour is bicycle speed. Vehicles find it very hard. Everyone I believe that I've seen are very cautious there, but I know there are those who are not. The one thing that my husband and I do when we choose in going home, we can choose to go North Walnut or we can choose to go. We have named that Tranquility Drive or Serenity because it is that. And vehicles can drive there and enjoy the beauty and the tranquility and the serenity of that drive and get peaceful enjoyment also. You don't have to just be a bicyclist or a pedestrian to do that. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sue Scambaluri. I represent Bloomington's District 2 and Bloomington City Council. Uh, two things I wanted to share tonight. First of all, thank you to all of you for being so thoughtful and intentional about this. Thank you as well to Director McDevitt for the work she and her staff have put into this as well. They've been uh, quite good about communicating with residents in our area. Most of the feedback I have heard thus far, particularly from residents in Blue Ridge and Matlock Heights, um, and Fritz Terrace has been positive about this. It will not interfere with some of the most common cut through patterns that they use uh, to get, say, from Blue Ridge to North. So I think that's positive. One of the things I do want to share is this coming Saturday, March 7th, um, from 1.30 to 2.30, I have a constituent meeting here at City Hall. Uh, and in particular, Director McDevitt's going to be joining me that day. So that's another opportunity, um, certainly for residents in District 2, but others as well, to come and share their thoughts and hear more about this project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, Ian Yarbrough. Um, I have the pleasure of serving on the Bloomington uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee as well, um, but I'm also a resident of Matlock Heights, uh, really close to the park as the bird flies, but not so much as the, as the bike rolls. Um, but uh, I would just like to say I'm really excited for the opportunity um, uh, to have this park be a little bit more uh, just sort of pedestrian friendly. I've got a young daughter, um, and it's nice to have a, <clears throat> a park that has the amenities of a, you know, a full-on playground and, and uh, the naturalness of like a, a stream and woods and things like that all kind of in the same uh, package. Um, and it was, you know, uh, over the winter and like sort of last fall, it was, it was great taking her down there. But when we walked down to the, to the waterfall area and then came back up from the south um, and crossed the road, it, you know, it was immediately apparent that that little bridge crossing that, um, yeah, there are, you know, cars haul mm -hmm. through there. Um, so, and as others have said, it, it, having some connectivity with the east and west um, neighborhoods would be really nice, uh, especially if there was an improvement over that um, kind of multi-use or gravel path from the, from the skate park down to the road. Um, that's a, kind of a steep grade. I kind of estimated it at like 10%, which is pretty rough. Um, but also there's potential on the south end, kind of close to 46, where that IMI driveway is. It's a much, uh, much less of a steep slope kind of more of the 7% slope that the, um, uh, the Clubhouse Hill is, but over a much shorter distance. Um, so there's, there's some, some opportunities there for future connectivity for pedestrians to, to get there without having to drive. Um, one thing I'd like to also say is that um, if it's going to be parallel parking from the south end, it might be nice to have some sort of accommodation for cars to turn around, because if you have 20 cars to on each side, it might be difficult if you're parallel parked way deep in there to get your car back out without dinging everybody up. But, um, uh, very excited. So thank you guys for, for um, providing the public with this opportunity. Thank you. Other public comment? All right, questions from the board. Uh, just opening it back up for questions based on comment. Thank you. Hi. Go ahead. Um, somebody brought up a good point about security vehicles and security mm -hmm. access. Any comment on that? Plans for security vehicles? Um, we have uh, contacted City Central Dispatch and they direct the Bloomington Fire Department and Emergency Services and they are aware of the pilot closure 
and also we have uh, spoken to BPD and they are also aware. They're Do, aware of it, but are there any plans? And, and they have alternative routes and just said thank you very much for informing us and we'll, we'll be aware. <laughs> Will they um, be able to contribute to the like overarching sort of study period of this to say what you know how that's impacted their um, response times sure, or travel absolutely. times? Absolutely, we area? have a list of uh, several people that we reached out to in communicating: school corporation, IMI, the emergency services. Um, I spoke to the county highway department as well, just letting them know they might see you know more traffic more into the county with people finding a different route through. So we'll be sure to be checking in with, with those folks as well on their experiences with it. And then I also wanted to say that I, Beth does have a turnaround um, section identified okay. on the south end to allow for people who are parallel parking to turn around and then get back out. And then as well as preliminary plans that Parks has as this develops is to find a connection to build a side path connection from Miller Showers Park down into the park. And that is um, on our plans. We have a, a big trail map that is color coded for what is under design and that section is um, part of that. And then the upper, what we call the Cascades Trail Phase 4, which does connect from the golf course up to North High School. Um, that is already designed. Uh, we are just waiting for funding that would come through um, a bond up, uh, uh, to, to funding for up in there. So will you keep us informed as things go along so that we'll be updated on how the surveys are working? Absolutely. That's what we've talked about in our team meetings is okay. DAFTA um, and Mallory will be communicating the results of those surveys on a monthly basis right, and then we will good. in turn be posting those on the website. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We can make sure to get those to your work okay. sessions and your regularly mm -hmm. scheduled meetings right. as well. Good. Thank yeah, you. That'd be great. Um, just another like MOT question. I, you have a lot of signs posted everywhere, and that's great. And then so folks that would be coming off of like turning right, let's say, on going south, turning right onto Lower or, Cascades. Yes, there. thank mm -hmm. you, yeah. Um, like would they know before they turn right? If they typically cut through there, would they be informed before they make that right that you know, that road's closed, yeah. Yeah, and um, yes, absolutely. And so it'll say, you know, road closure ahead, uh, road closure through traffic, those types of signage. Uh, you know, the, the closure on the northern limits of this project are such that um, access is still maintained to the Lower Cascades, the nice playground down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so if someone by chance missed the signage and did need a turnaround, that would be available too. Okay. And we're also putting signage up by the golf course as well okay. for people that are coming through there or traditionally leave the golf course and head home that way. And the golf course will also have all the information on the pilot project just to inform those users. Right. And the closure points will have, instead of just a barricade, they'll have concrete barriers? Yes, we'll make sure we have mm -hmm. proper barricades and everything for that. Yes. And from the calls and, and uh, public comment that you got prior to this meeting, what were those types of comments beyond just questions about um, timing? I've received, let's see, I've received four very um, um, positive emails that I'll be happy to leave um, for you, just anywhere from people who live close, um, cyclists, um, people that are looking forward to using the park in this way. Um, I did take a call from a gentleman in, in Matlock Heights. Um, and he um, was confused about where the closure was happening and thought that it was full closure and how would he be able to access um, the parking lot. And then when I explained that to him, he, he understood. Um, and then I've taken two other calls that you know people just would like to see it remain open and that's understandable as well. But they um, also seemed very open to, okay, well, try it and let us know but they mm -hmm. they and we encourage people that this is part of the the process sure. and we absolutely encourage people to let us know um, one way or the other thank you so um, what then is the next plan so this is a study period um, of closure at what point would the board be 
uh, receiving, you know, I know we, we're going to keep up to date periodically on information that's coming through from surveying, but uh, what will be the next time that uh, this roadway would be before the Board of Public um, Works, do we think? So uh, in front of the board, uh, you know, if this were ever to become a, a conversation about a permanent closure of this, um, you know, that's a, a larger conversation would require Title 15 changes too, correct? Yeah, so would, that would also be a, a, a decision that would go in front of the city council as well. So, so does that mean the plan is to reopen the road in September? Hmm. To be determined. To be determined. That, that was my question. question. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I think that's all of why this is a pilot, to learn about the information that's coming through. And, you know, as the summer progresses, if, if the plan would be to request a long-term closure of this, um, there would certainly be a, a more extensive public process to, right. to do so. that. But at this time, you know, I, I suppose I couldn't guarantee that, you know, if we start to see in July and August that it's been a great success, that we wouldn't potentially start that process. Okay. Um, but again, that would require a full decision of the city council. Okay. The, uh, any type of long-term closure. And again, that process would look similar to this one with respect uh, to noticing oh, those addresses mm -hmm. that neighbor the um, park and the area affected. Uh, of course, um, you know, media releases and information to the public to um, be able to uh, be aware of all of that process, since it will be, it sounds like, a more extensive um, review process uh, than this type of um, type of study closure. Pilot, yeah. And this is also, as I, I mentioned, this is part of a, a big improvement project down in Lower Cascades, and we're <coughs> currently working with Eagle Ridge uh, Civil Engineering Services. Um, they, that's who did the initial survey um, and has uh, talked initial designs with us. Um, currently, their focus is on the accessible pathway back to the waterfall, um, but he is very much aware that this pilot is going on, so this is all sort of moving along a parallel path looking at the survey results, we would definitely need to timeline it back as it figures in our big um, project. But um, as I mentioned, we have quite a bit of work to do down there, and this would fold into that and, and make sure that there is definitely part of this process is public um, input um, and feedback, so and notifying, and we would, we would follow the same process that we have followed to establish this pilot project as well. And for that continued public feedback, I know there's a survey um, which is primarily directed towards um, uh, park goers, people mm -hmm. who are enjoying the park in one way or another, uh, for um, questions, concerns, or comments on the road closure. Mm -hmm. um, where should people direct those uh, comments to the Beth, public? Beth, what's your direct line? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it to Public Works or? Uh, how about we, we can offer two phone numbers? Yes. The direct line at Public Works is 812-349-3410 and the number at Parks? 812-349-3700 and what we will share with Public Works is our survey monkey and it's really great. It's just as you're having a conversation, um, how, you know, where the, com where did they get their information, what their concern is um, and so we're documenting all those responses that are really very directed at the, the support or not for the pilot. Okay. Great. We take it back. Since you already have the survey monkey, I think your staff could. Uh, Michael <laughs> said that he thought it could just be up to parks. <sighs> okay. Kidding. Phone number rescinded. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, I'll, I'll be intrigued um, to see, you know, what the findings are from uh, this as someone who has, um, you know, enjoyed this park in many different ways during my time uh, here in Bloomington, which has been from, you know, infancy on. Uh, I, I can say that, um, you know, I, I, could, I could hear many of my experiences in the public comments we received, both in concern about closing it and in um, looking forward to this new possibility for the park. So I'm, I'm intrigued by um, what the study will reveal um, and what we can learn from that other board comment just that the, the parents I think brought forth the issues with their children and how uh, safety is a big factor for you 
as you, your children are growing up and, and uh, enjoying the park. A lot of positive from the parents. Thank you. Any final comment from the board? All right. Is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve temporary closure of Lower Cascades Road Friday, March 13th through Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Next, we have approve acceptance of public improvements with Trades <coughs> District. Hi, Sarah Gomez, uh, Public Improvements Manager with the Planning and Transportation Department. Um, <clears throat> um, the Economic and Sustainable Development staff has requested to have public improvements associated with the Trades District Development Project um, accepted by the city. The public improvements uh, include sidewalks, curbs, street trees, uh, street name stop signs, curb ramps, um, all located along two streets being accepted into the city inventory, which is uh, Maker Way and Madison Street. Um, <clears throat> the new right-of-way is uh, 72 feet wide on um, Maker Way and 0 .057 um, miles in length. And uh, on along Madison Street, it uh, varies between 58 and a half feet to 72 feet wide and is 0 .13 miles in length. Um, this is all between uh, 10th and 11th Street and Rogers and Morton Street, just to give some context. Um, acceptance of these public improvements uh, will initiate the following city services by the Public Works Department, including uh, street maintenance um, of signs, uh, plowing, salting, and paving, and street light maintenance as well. Uh, sanitation will include emptying the 14 new trash cans located in the public right-of-way. Um, then there will be some parking services and enforcement uh, that currently uh, has an agreement for on-street parking along Maker and Madison um, that is permitted with uh, mill employees only, um, which could change in the future. Um, it is open to public parking after 5 p.m. and before 8 a.m. in the morning, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends as well. Um, once the Trades District Garage opens, then that uh, those services may change um, moving forward. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department will maintain trimming and replacement of 83 new, 83 new street trees, as well as watering any street trees that are not serviced by the irrigation system that was put in place. Um, the RDC is contract with Nature's Way for the maintenance of all the other landscaping that's in the right of way, including the um, flower pots and so on and uh, as well as operation and maintenance of the irrigation system. Uh, the City of Bloomington Utilities has inspected and accepted the infrastructure that, uh, that they will maintain. Um, planning staff has no out outstanding items. Um, and there are only two outstanding items uh, that uh, Kelly Boatman said need to be addressed, and that is um, replacement of five benches that have uh, an issue with the finishes, and those will be replaced via the company they bought them from um, via uh, basically a maintenance kind of thing uh, that they have with them. Um, and then there's some polymetric sand joints in the paver, the brick pavers that they also um, will be addressed by the decorative paving. Uh, company that installed them via a warranty. Uh, the remaining items can and will be completed via those warranties um, and the bond in place that's held by the controller's office uh, will be released upon acceptance of the rest of the right-of-way um, for the city. Um, <clears throat> code states public improvements must be inspected and approved by the PNT department and require acceptance by BPW. Um, before becoming part of the C city street inventory, planning and transportation staff have inspected the public improvements and recommend acceptance. Are there any questions or from the board? I have a comment. I think 83 new street trees is going to be a forest someday. <laughs> yeah, if they let them grow too much, I guess. Street forest. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none. Is 
there a motion on I move approval of acceptance of public improvements with the trades district. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next is award contract to Monroe LLC for right of way clearing for South Sarah Road multi use path. Russell White with City Planning and Transportation. On March 2nd, during the work session, the board opened sealed quotes for right-of-way clearing on South Sarah Road for a uh, f future path, multi-use path project. This quotes included clearing of trees and brush from the right-of-way on the west side of South Sarah Road from approximately East, East Cathcart Street to East Buttonwood Lane. The board received two quotes one from Connexco Incorporated for $99,500 and one from Monroe LLC for $31,900. Staff has reviewed the quotes and is recommending the board award the construction contract to Monroe LLC as the lowest responsive and responsible quoter. Why do you think there was a big discrepancy, such a big discrepancy in the, in the bidding costs? Hello, um, good evening. Craig Schunkweiler, transportation and traffic engineer. Um, yeah, there is a large discrepancy between the two bidders. We talked to the low bidder. Um, the low bidder did express some concerns um, with some lack of clarity within the documents. Mm -hmm. I reviewed those documents this afternoon and I do see and understand um, their, the bit low bidder's concerns. What we um, came to an understanding is that um, we are only limited to allowing a overage of 20% per state code. Mm. So what we're recommending, staff's recommending, is that uh, Monroe LLC be awarded the contract. We will likely come back to you folks with a change order for some additional work of the up to the 20%. Anything beyond that, public works crews will take care of to get this done. We are a little bit on it. We are on a tight timeline. There is the Indiana bat that we have to be concerned about here. Mm -hmm. We have to get these trees felled by March 31st mm. so that we can then follow up with our multi-use path project behind um, behind that and get that work going on here. Um, the bids are open actually in April and then we'll be doing construction here from spring, summer, fall, and then we'll roll into the next year to work on the Moores Pike Sarah Road intersection. How many trees are you planning to clear? There, there's about 20 to 25 trees, but then there are also clear zones okay. where there's underbrush, and that's where the, the um, concerns were expressed by the right. bidder. I mean, is there any reason that we wouldn't go with the other company, seeing as how we would eventually pay for it ourselves? like that difference? Well, so if we add in, so like just mathematically that we have a, a low bid of 31,900. Mm -hmm. So 20% would be 6,380. So the total would be 38,280. So we're still way off from the second bidder. But didn't you say any work beyond that public works would cover? So we're estimating that public works crews will get in ahead of uh, this and take down, uh, just fell um, 10 to 12 trees. Okay. Of the 25, uh, the contractor would still be responsible for moving those, for removing those and such. But, um, you know, our work will be pretty minimal. Um, I assume less than a day's work. Yeah. Okay. Um, the contractor would still be removing all of that as it comes down. Um, and we had some lengthy discussions with the, the um, with the Mineral LLC uh, ownership today to really kind of get to the nuts and bolts of yeah. how that would work. Um, we certainly understood where the misunderstanding come, had come from, and uh, this seemed like a very fair approach to make sure we still got the work done by the time that it needed to be done. You know, if we don't get this tree work done by the end of March, this pro entire project's delayed a year. Um, so we thought it was important enough to um, you know, compromise and, and come to a fair solution. I think that's really what we've done. The, okay. the other thing that I look at um, is where that second bidder is at. The second mm -hmm. bidder's way far mm -hmm. away. If the second bidder was close here and, you know, they wouldn't have the same opportunity, but right. they were so way off okay. that that shouldn't be a concern there. Okay. Have you worked with Monroe LLC before? You, I, I have not. I'm, I'm new to the city. Mm -hmm. um, 
We have. Um, we have. Um, we've addressed some of the previous concerns we've had um, okay. and are comfortable recommending approval here. So let's start right away. As soon as we can get a, a, a contract and a notice to proceed, yes. Right. So within, I would say, early next week. that we award the contract to Monroe LLC for right-of-way clearing for South Sarah Road multi-use path. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next is approved request from AECOM for sidewalk closure along North Monroe Street, and that's Monday, March 23rd through Friday, April 10th. Hi, Sarah Gomez again, uh, covering for Paul Kerber. Um, ACOM is requesting a sidewalk closure uh, between North Orris Drive and West, Fort, uh, and West 14th Street um, so that the City of Bloomington Utilities Department can do some remediation with the old water uh, tank there on the corner of 14th and Monroe. Uh, the sidewalk closure will allow them to safely remove the contaminated soil from the site. Um, all appropriate sidewalk closed signs and barricades will be in place, and they are planning to install a temporary crosswalk at uh, uh, 12th Street so that uh, pedestrians can be <clears throat> taken to the west side of Monroe Street all the way to 14th, where they'll cross back over uh, north of 14th Street. They've supplied maintenance traffic plans for all their work and sent a notice to property owners. Um, staff has reviewed the request and recommends approval. I believe Mr. Bassett is here for any questions you might have. I can't answer. So. Questions from the board? No. So it's just going to be from 8 to 5 p.m.? Oh, I'm sorry. It'll be um, a 24-hour closure okay. from uh, March 23rd to April 10th. Okay. Apologies, I didn't time. say the dates. On the application, it says 8 to 5 is why I asked. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, the hours of work. The hours of work. That's what they mm -hmm. were thinking. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I think It'll be closed, yeah. Other questions? Hi, uh, Greg Alexander here. Um, I'm excited to see it. There's a temporary crosswalk being installed. That should be standard. Um, that should happen a lot more often. Um, it's at the wrong place, though. It's at 12th Street, and everybody that lives between 12th Street and the south part of the project is going to have to cross the street, and they're they're not going to go south a block and then come back up. They're going to jaywalk. Um, and that's, that's supposed to be a safe route to school. That's uh, people that live on the north half of Orris would naturally use that route to get to Tri-North High School. There are a lot, of, or Tri-North Junior High, sorry, Middle High. Um, there, there are a lot of families that live on Orris. I don't know specifically how many walk to Tri-North, but they're gonna wind up with a really crappy choice because of this. Um, and th we're not forced to give them a poor choice because the road there is 30 feet wide. It's got uh, north, south, and parking. It's got three lanes. And so all you could do is get rid of that parking lane and you could put Jersey barriers in the road and could have a proper walk around um, where they don't have to cross the road and aren't exposed to any more hazard. And since this is supposed to be a safe route to school, I really think that's essential, the bare minimum. Thank you. So the, the way I'm looking at this right now is there's two homes, there's only two homes um, that would potentially have to do that. Um, oh, and then the homes on, or, yeah, well, but Greg, you may know, I'm gonna ask if you don't mind, Greg, you may know better, I know you uh, are in this area often. It, there's a path that does go over yeah, there is a one path that does head over, I think, from Oris that still remained open between Oris and 
14th. Is it 14th? What's the north south that goes up uh, to the swimming pool? Um, Blair? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there is a path there. Um, so that is an, a viable option. Um, what we can explain, yes, yeah, so, but there is only uh, a couple homes on actual Monroe. Um, and that, I'm just looking at the map here, that might have to backtrack a bit. Um, we can also explore, uh, we'll explore with the engineering team and, and maintenance traffic folks to see if another crosswalk would make sense at Oris. I'm sure there was a reason why we didn't suggest another crosswalk there. Yeah, we picked 12th Street because there's ramps. Oh, oh there's sorry. no ADA ramps there. That's yeah. right. That, that was it. Yep. Yep. That's why we went down to 12th. Correct. Yeah. Um, which is understandable. We want to make sure that um, safe passage for yeah those with ADA issues. Um, so that pathway from Oris is just not on this um, right. path and agility no. uh, over to the east, east yes. right? Yeah. Um, That's right. And that would be oriented towards uh, the travel to the school and back? Mm -hmm. That would help e with that. Um, east of the work site? Yes. So off the image that we have. Oh, like, like all not, the way east. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's on the other kind of end of oh, okay. forest. Oh, okay. Forest. Yeah, it's just not on here. Other questions on this item? Is the so they're going to explore a little bit mm -hmm. more about that one, that section's closed. The One crossings closed between the houses on the hill. I'm that section. You're going to explore a little mm -hmm. bit more about. Yeah, Oris to Blair does have a path open that can help facilitate okay. the homes on Oris if they're going back up to try okay. north. But um, you know, uh, <clears throat> good thing is this is only a couple week closure. Um, we will obviously work very closely with the contractor and uh, CBU who they're contracted through to make sure we're uh, monitoring. Um, I'm trying to imagine, where is the parking lane on the southbound traffic lane? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the west side of the road. So I think the, the idea was that if they're going to be taking, you know, soil in and out across mm -hmm. that sidewalk, it's not okay. a safe situation to put pedestrian uh, yes. in. So. Oh, so even if we did, oh, that's why we didn't. So that's it is why this, wider, but yeah. And that's why we didn't think about the walk path on. That's why the walk path didn't make sense on, for the northbound sidewalks to do the Jersey barriers because the trucks will be coming. They're taking the contaminated soil out over where that that walk path would be. Right. I see. Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No. Okay. Is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve request from AECOM for sidewalk closure along North Monroe Street, Monday, March 23rd through Friday, April 10th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next is approve encroachment agreement with August Mac Environmental for monitoring wells and gas ports. Uh, Sarah Gomez again, co uh, covering for Paul. Um, August Mac Environmental needs to install some monitoring wells um, in response to an item request uh, due to the uh, Alley Works project next to Yonko's there on 6th Street. Um, they are doing two uh, soil gas ports um, along 6th Street and in the alley behind uh, 217 West 6th Street. Uh, the wells are approximately 15 feet deep and are encased in two inch PVC. Uh, the soil gas port is a six inch by one and a quarter inch, I'm sorry, by quarter inch stainless steel screen. The tops of the wells and soil port will be flush with the sidewalk and have a metal cover. Um, with that, there will be some uh, a sidewalk closure, but that's not, again, we kind of discussed yesterday how that wasn't part of the approval, it'll just be like a one day thing, but the encroachment yeah. agreement for the monitoring wells themselves um, is what's, what the approval was for, um, and staff has reviewed the request and recommends approval. Questions on this item? No. Any public comment? Is 
there a motion on this item? Can I move approval of the encroachment agreement with August Mac Environmental for the monitoring wells and the gas ports? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Next up is approved request from Gillette General Contractors Inc. for sidewalk and lane closure on North Morton Street from West 6th to West 7th Street, uh, Monday, March 16th through Friday, March 20th. Again, Sarah Gomez, Planning and Transportation Department. Um, Gillette General Contractors is requesting to close uh, the sidewalk and the southbound lane of Morton Street, again, between spring break week, uh, the 16th to the 20th. Um, they have supplied uh, maintenance traffic plans for that work and also sent notices to the adjacent property owners um, about the board meeting and their scope of work. Staff has reviewed the request and recommends granting permission to Gillette for the temporary lane closure. Um, and this is for the installation of two, um, three different services. I believe two are water and one is, san no, one is water and two are sanitary. Um, uh, there in Morton Street for the Hayes Market Development Project going in uh, between 6th and 7th Street. So this is during spring break week? Correct. Be all done during that week. Mm-hmm. Yes. Good. Good work. Good time. Yeah. Good things like this. Do they need to be paying the parking meters during this? Yes. At the new rate? They are aware. Okay. The new rate. <laughs> Always want to make sure. Make Got sure your back. Paid right. <laughs> <laughs> before. Where you start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with it. Very memorable task because it's the only time. Right. <laughs> um, questions on this? No. Any public comments? Seeing none, is there a motion? I move approval of the request from Gillette General Contractors Inc. for the sidewalk and lane closures on North Morton Street uh, from West 6th Street to West 7th Street, March 16th through March 20th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Next is approved temporary street closure from IU on North Walnut's Walnut Grove Street. Walnut Grove Street. That's not right. Walnut not Grove. Right. <laughs> Walnut Street. Walnut Let me see Grove. who signed this letter. <laughs> Grove. Grove. Uh, I am. Um, <laughs> and North Forest Avenue, Thursday, March 5th through Monday, August 31st. What would Walnut Grove be? It wouldn't be an avenue. It wouldn't be a street. Is it just a grove? It's listed on it's just Google's map. Walnut Google Maps grove. is North Walnut Grove Street. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, I usually like to give Mr. Bannock a little more Walnut trouble than grove that. But, street. Um, so this is a request coming from Indiana University um, and through their real estate yeah. and capital development group um, for a closure through August 31st of 2021. Uh, this will help uh, facilitate a um, construction project there north of 11th Street. Um, staff is recommending approval, but I'll turn it over to IU for anything that they would like to add. Good evening, board members. Jason Bannock with Indiana University. Just basically glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, it's actually not 11th Street that will be closed, as you saw as depicted there. It's actually Forest uh, Avenue on the west and then Walnut Grove Street on the east. Oh. <laughs> so 11th does remain open. It's just the other two. Correct. There may be some temporary need from time to time to close 11th, but it's actually just the Walnut Grove, which actually dead ends. Then at yeah. the north side anyway mm -hmm. uh, and then forest on the on the west side which is as you know probably not a very well used section of forest so i also have bob richardson with me senior uh, architect from indiana university to answer any questions about the project that you might have any questions is this a new building yes this bloody uh, bob would you like to talk about the building Hi, Bob Richardson. It's the new Luddy Center for Artificial Intelligence that we just had a groundbreaking for last week, which is being built just northeast of Luddy Hall. And it's a, an office building and a parking garage behind, attached to it behind it. And we've already bid the project. Weddell Brothers Construction from Bloomington will be the contractor. We haven't started yet. But this is simply to allow lay down an access for the for the contractors we will keep access obviously for our adjacent properties on either end as well yep. 
That was going to be my question. Just those, it looks like there's one property on Forest that I don't see another entry, but maybe I just can't see it from the image. And keeping, I don't know if that's an IU property or not, um, but keeping access to that. IU does own all adjacent properties. Yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. The, the power plants on the east and then there are two academic buildings on the west that we'll, we will maintain access to. So. Thank you. Uh, didn't think to ask this in the work session. Surprise. Uh, it, do we have any closures on 10th Street for the summer? Uh, I, I'm looking at everyone. Who's in the we will do paving. <laughs> uh, yes, there is. Uh, there will be a paving project on 10th, but with 11th not being closed here. That, that was going to be my point. Was just making sure yeah. that 11th, you know, that's, that's great open. that 11th is not impacted because the chances that we will have to uh, consider 11th for. So, that might be finding its way. So, so during the paving project on 10th from Forest to Jordan, um, the maintenance of traffic plan would not call out 11th Street for any official detours. It would just only be local traffic that knew that that existed. Uh, the official detours would be 17th and 3rd. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, it's good for both official and unofficial yeah. traffic. Yes. And again, just to reiterate, we may be back at some point to ask for a very temporary closure of 11, but those would not be long in duration. And we've worked very closely with uh, Indiana University on the 10th Street repaving project. It was scheduled for last year. Uh, we bumped it to this year, made some very minor improvements last year so that we could all consider a better pedestrian uh, safety mechanism there by SPIA and Kelly School of Business. And so that's been all worked out and we have a uh, a plan in place with I uh, with IU Capital folks to make sure we're all um, that, that that project moves forward this summer. Good. Okay. Yes. Summer projects coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Uh, any other questions on this item? No. Any public comment on this item? Seeing none. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the temporary street closure from IU on North Walnut Grove Street in North Forest Avenue, Thursday, March fifth through. Monday, August 31st. Second. All in favor. 2021. 2021. 22, oh, okay, that is oh, not here. 2021. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> I second it. Do we have a motion and a second? I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll make sure the minutes ac accurately reflect okay. the dates of the closure. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Uh, next up, we have approved request for city sanitation rate increase. Uh, good evening. Adam Wason again, Public Works Director for the City of Bloomington. On behalf of Rhea Carter and our sanitation division, um, so uh, as you folks are aware, the Board of Public Works was designated by the Common Council uh, to approve rate, the final rate structures for the modernized sanitation collection system. Um, and the City Council, when they uh, passed that uh, um, ordinance that that legislation in uh, July of 2017 uh, set a range for each of the different uh, solid waste cart sizes where we would uh, where the board would make uh, final recommendations and final uh, rate decisions within those different cart size ranges um, and uh, here's a good example of why uh, that 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 um, went forward the way it did um, so staff um, so several factors are going into this uh, request for a uh, increase to the sanitation rates, um, uh, and uh, the the main the the factor that's driving this uh, decision to have this request uh, has to do with our recycling program. Uh, in 2019, uh, we in late 2018 and um, for the 2019 year uh, year of 2019. Uh, the city entered into a new contract with Republic Services for both our solid waste disposal and the processing of our uh, single stream recycling. Uh, at that time, uh, and for the first time in the history of Bloomington, uh, Bloomington Sanitation Program, we were charged a per ton rate for recycling processing. Um, as many folks probably know, uh, there have been major, there's been a major upheaval in the international recycling commodities market. 
uh, mainly uh, due to some international issues where um, <clears throat> recycling uh, is being accepted in ways that it was previously. Uh, this has um, really turned the recycling market upside down in a lot of ways. Um, you know, for a community like Bloomington that used to receive annual rebates for our fibers, our paper, cardboard products, and for our metals, um, with the changes to in the industry, we have not been receiving rebates um, uh, for those recycled commodities. Um, and so with that contract with Republic Services, uh, we pay $26.40 per ton for single stream recycling processing. For comparison, we pay $43 a ton for uh, solid waste landfill charges. Um, and in 2019 alone, we collected 3, just over 3,200 tons of recyclables at a total cost for pro of processing of $85,616.40. Um, for 2019, we absorbed those costs with uh, uh, some cost cutting measures and uh, some additional general fund support. Um, going forward, that's not a sustainable financial model for the sanitation division. So we have, uh, we are requesting that we move um, each of the solid waste cart fees uh, to the maximum rates allowed uh, under the city council's original legislation. This would mean that um, the 35 gallon, those uh, residents that have a 35 gallon solid waste cart who currently pay 622 a month would pay 651 a month under this proposal. Uh, for the 64 gallon solid waste cart fee, um, it's currently $10.52 and that would move to $11.61. Uh, for the 96 gallon um, solid waste cart fee, uh, it's currently $16.60 and that would go up to $18.52. Um, this is, uh, for our average users, this is a 70, cent, 70 cents per month additional uh, fee uh, cost and uh, will help with about 7% increase in overall revenues. Um, even with these rate increases, we still won't cover the entire cost of recycling processing at this time, but again, we're looking at some different uh, cost cutting measures and some, uh, and looking at where our general fund support comes in at. Um, you know, the one thing I can say is since our new program, um, we're recycling at, at pretty high rates um, in terms of our overall tonnages, um, and that, um, you know, when we considered the new program, um, we knew that there were possible changes, in that, you know, the, the indications were that the recycling market was uh, pretty steady at the time. Uh, in about a nine month, 12 month period from the new program being initiated, we've really seen that recycling market upheaval. and. Uh, we're working very closely. I spent a good portion of my afternoon on the phone with, well, not a good portion, but uh, a lengthy phone call with our reps at Hoosier Disposal and Republic Services about some additional outreach programs we can do to get our recycling um, in a cleaner state. Um, you know, we really are, we've done some outreach efforts with the media, with direct mailings to our residents that use the solid waste, or use our sanitation program, and trying to make sure folks really understand what is recyclable and what not what is not. Um, under our current uh, agreements with Hoosier Disposal, we can no longer take styrofoam. So your number seven plastics just are not recyclable. There's no market for that. Um, unfortunate, um, but uh, we'll pay additional. Uh, so for every ton or for every um, load of, uh, for every bit of contamination that comes through the recycling program and processing, we do pay a landfilling fee at that higher rate plus additional transportation fees. So that's, you know, we really uh, have been trying to work with residents and are gonna continue to do that uh, through hopefully some rather, um, you know, through uh, different communication channels to uh, make sure folks recognize what is and what's not recyclable. Um, you know, we, you know, previously, um, it was about a year ago, uh, Monroe County Solid Waste uh, um, had an edict that they were no longer allowed to accept the um, film, the plastic film, the plastic bags from Kroger, et cetera. Um, that has now fallen to us as well based on the conversation I had this afternoon. Uh, previously, we were allowed to put those in and those were set, separated out very early in the process, but um, <clears throat> given the market for that, we've now been told that we're gonna have to uh, inform our customers and our residents that the uh, solid waste um, that the uh, Hoosier Republic Services can no longer accept that film in any uh, form. So we'll be 
doing some additional outreach there. Um, you know, what this leads me to believe uh, is that we really need to focus in on our recycling program. And, uh, you know, we, we do pay close attention to our tonnages and things like that, but we really need to start thinking about what the future of recycling is going to be. Um, you know, right now we're planning to continue with single stream recycling uh, throughout 2020 and, and 2021, but we'll be looking at what other, what options exist, what should we be re really focusing our recycling efforts on, how can we potentially localize some of those markets for commodities, things like that. Um, I have a grand dream that someday we'll be the first community in Indiana with a glass fault street or uh, asphalt with plastic aggregate in it. Um, not there yet, um, need to really find some willing partners, but we need to be, you know, uh, Bloomington is a community that's been known to be uh, entrepreneurial in their thought, and I think we really need to uh, think about that with recycling. Um, side note compared to where we're at currently, but um, something that we're definitely thinking about. Um, in addition, just for residents to know, um, if there's any question about what, what is recyclable under the current program and what's not recyclable, um, visit the sanitation website, bloomington.in.gov forward slash sanitation. We've got a FAQ and, a, and certainly a list of products that are recyclable and those that are not. Um, you know, beyond that, um, you know, we're going to continue those outreach efforts. We're going to continue to try to improve our overall recycling program. But uh, we definitely feel like this is a necessary step to maintain some, maintain the program as is, and and um, and and do so in a fiscally responsible manner. I'm happy to answer any questions. What about glass? Did Closer you, to your microphone, Beth. Did you talk about glass? Uh, you know, glass is still, we're still contracting okay. through Republic Services that they're uh, right. recycling and, um, and taking our glass. Um, you know, I, I'll leave it at that. Yes, okay. it's still, it's still right. collected and it's still processed for us. That's part of our contract. That's part of our agreement. Um, do I see a day in the future where that might not be possible? Potentially, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, um, you know, I definitely see a point in time here, um, probably is, is in 2021, where we're back in front of the city council talking about sanitation uh, as a whole. Um, you know, one good thing um, that we've got, you know, we're <clears throat> one of the, the big things that we were very hopeful for with the new sanitation program back in 2017. Um, was the amount of data we'd be able to collect on individual participation. Um, we've talked about this here before. Um, the contractor that we were uh, using for uh, getting the software in place, the hardware and software in place to have that, um, uh, that ability to really track that individual usage by address was unsuccessful. We um, terminated our partnership with them uh, in late 2019. Um, as of, we've, we've executed a new contract through the board and uh, the hardware installations for our new program uh, called Routeware will begin uh, March 23rd, 23rd and um, be wrapped up by the early parts of April. So that data will then start becoming available to us on a weekly basis. You know, we still, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> For the uh, data, um, those interested in data, uh, such as Michael and myself, that's when we really get to dig deep into what the program's doing. Uh, it's been very frustrating and disappointing we haven't had that. Um, it was very frustrating and disappointing to have to terminate that contract with that vendor, um, but it was certainly the right thing to do given a lack of progress. So we're at a point now where we're moving forward. We're very confident in uh, the new vendor. Um, we've been to multiple communities where the, that software is being used, where that hardware is being used. Um, we've seen it in action. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting that we're you know, going to get to that point. That will start to really inform decisions. You know, if we see that our 96-gallon solid waste users are dumping every single week, whereas our 35 gallon users are not, we have things to think about from a rate structure, you know, um, and from a, a usage structure. So it's that individual participation data that we're really looking forward to. Thank you. That's good, good coverage. Thank Any you. questions? No. Is 
their emotion. I move that we approve request for city sanitation rate increase. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Next up is staff reports and other business. So um, staff reports, um, just want to welcome a new staff member in the Public Works Administration Divi Administrative Division, April Rosenberger. April Rosenberger is our new, it's hard when you've got Rosenbergers and Rosenbergers, but April Rosenberger is our new office manager. We're glad to have her on board. Um, she'll be uh, filling a vacancy that Michael left. Uh, Michael's uh, moved into a special projects and operations manager role. Uh, so we're really excited to be able to kind of tackle um, some bigger projects with, with um, both staff members being fully staffed now. Um, in addition to that, uh, just want folks to recognize, you know, it's now March 3rd. Um, asphalt plants will be opening in early April. Construction season's just around the corner. Um, we've got some, we've got big projects coming. We've got big projects to finish up. Um, you know, the one thing I've realized in all of my years in city government is that there's not going to be a summer where focused efforts are, focused efforts are not made on construction projects, on infrastructure projects that are going to impact the communities, commuting patterns and everything else. Um, it is, um, it is a, um, a necessity to keep investing in that infrastructure and while we recognize it can have some inconvenience for uh, commuters and travelers and things we try to always take that into account we've got big projects this summer that we're excited about um, and we'll be doing um, uh, regular updates through the office of the mayor with general media court, um, pieces and, and social media and everything else but uh, some of the big projects we've got coming will be repaving second street from patterson out to i-69 uh, as part of a, a community crossings grant program within DOT. We'll be working on Prow Road, um, or no, not Prow, Arlington Road from the roundabout up to Prow with a full repaving project, also part of the community crossings grant program. We'll be down on Kirkwood um, doing pavement, pavement maintenance and crosswalk re rehabilitation. Um, Kirkwood and Adams will have uh, a project to install some protected bike lanes and uh, help with the traffic configuration there. Uh, INDOT will be out on East 3rd Street uh, with a full repaving project. These are necessary investments that we understand will have, you know, some that will have impacts on the traveling public, but we try to mitigate those the best we can. Um, for 2nd Street and the Adams project, you know, those are very close to each other. We couldn't pass up that grant funding from INDOT. If they're going to pay for half of a major paving project, we've got to, you know, go for that, and it's, it's needed. Um, but we're also looking at, you know, uh, very much focusing in on when lane restrictions will be in place at each of the projects and trying to offset those to really mitigate effort, uh, uh, um, any type of traffic impacts. Um, you know, so <laughs> if you can't tell, it's exciting to build these new projects. It's important. It's, inf it's infrastructure investments that the city needs. It's balancing all of the modes of transportation. When we think about transportation projects, it's, you know, it's listening to folks like Mr. Alexander who are super passionate about making sure pedestrian um, pathways are clear and free and all of those sorts of things. Um, and so um, the feedback's important, the, the conversation's important, the passion's important, and uh, to me, most importantly, is the infrastructure investments. That, that's what helps keep the community moving and growing and uh, doing all the good stuff that we do. Uh, beyond that, I could keep going with other things on staff reports. We have plenty of animals at the shelter. We've got lots of good projects coming up uh, beyond just construction projects, but uh, I'll leave it at that for today and let folks know we'll be providing regular updates. Thank you. All right, next up is approval of claims. Are there any questions on the claims? No comments on the claims. All right. Uh, is there a motion on claims? I move that we approve claims six hundred and twenty-five, no, six hundred twenty-six thousand three hundred twenty dollars and forty-two cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. And if there's nothing else this evening, then I will call for adjournment.